I can relate to people who have difficulty understanding the importance of fixed route transportation, NAT transit for people with severe disabilities because at one point I could not understand why a person would prefer that type of fixed route service to the type of service that comes to your house, the handy ride type of service that we have here in Denver. But I've learned over the years that there is a, there are many, many reasons why that type of service is totally inadequate. I have many work associates and friends who uh, use the system here in Denver, and they need it for things like going to the state capitol to testify for a hearing that's called that morning and scheduled for that afternoon. They need a way to get down to that hearing quickly, and uh, Handy Ride or the paratransit type service just isn't equipped to do it. If they want to drop off at the library and do some research, they have an opportunity to do that. If they want to go to lunch with some friends, they can do that. If they need to pick some groceries up on the way home, they can do that. The, fix, the um, paratransit system doesn't allow a person to do any of those things. Which all of those things that you just listed are, are rights and responsibilities of any citizen. Exactly, and if a citizen is going to function uh, as a, an independent, productive, tax-paying citizen or if the person is not able to earn wages, if they are to function as a person who uh, has some productivity in the community, they've got to be able to use that kind of system. So it's very counterproductive to uh, to tell people who have uh, disabilities that they don't need that type of service and that it's not cost-effective for, for government to pay for it. Because it literally stops them from going to school, getting a better education, getting a job, uh, advancing themselves once they get a job, uh, doing things for themselves, and it leads them to dependency. And dependency costs a lot of money. So it's, it's stupid behavior for us not to uh, uh, realize that since the technology is available, uh, we should be doing it. it. It makes sense. It is insane not to do it. It's as insane uh, to me as uh, someone a hundred years ago saying, uh, I think we should uh, not have to pay for steps in the buildings because they're just too expensive. Uh, most people could certainly climb a rope to get into the first floor or the second floor or the third floor of the building and therefore why should we spend all that money for concrete and marble and steel? It's, it's absurd for us to do that. Well, to me, it's just as absurd to say, well, we can't afford lifts, you know, it would cost too much money, there's another way, we can set up a separate system. Well, there's a, there's a new uh, slogan that's used in business, and it, it really has a lot of merit, and it is called KISS, Keep It Simple, Stupid. And we don't need to be setting up a duplicative system whereby someone tails another bus in a lift-equipped smaller van. Uh, the technology is there. It's absurd. We have a growing elderly population in our country. Many people who are elderly have arthritis, other orthopedic problems, balance problems, coordination problems, hearing problems, vision problems. Let's wake up and smell the coffee. We just have to do it. It's counterproductive for us as a society not to be able to move all of our citizens from one point to another. Now, I think we still need a paratransit system. There are people who are unable to know where to pick up the bus. I know some people who have uh, developmental disabilities, retardation, who cannot remember uh, where the bus stop is. If they had to walk three bu blocks to the bus stop, they might never find it. And if they were coming home on a regular bus, they might never be able to find their front door if they had to walk a couple of blocks from the nearest bus stop. Uh, there are people with severe uh, medical problems that cannot stand being out in the cold for 15 minutes waiting for a bus. Their heart would not take it, or their, their uh, circulation would not endure it. So there is obviously a need for that type of system, too and that's the way we should uh, develop our system. Fixed route accessibility for all citizens, except those who need the door-to-door uh, -door type of service that you can get through uh, Handy Ride or Ambo Cab or some of the other uh, services. It makes me angry. I have a son who has a disability. He's eight years old, he uses a wheelchair, and he has had a couple of field trips that he has uh, had to have his teachers carrying him onto RTD buses so that, so that he can go on the field trip. And it's just absurd to me that all those other children are able to walk on the bus and Jeremy has to be picked up by a teacher uh, and carried onto a bus. He shouldn't have to feel that insecurity of being lifted off the ground and 
tilted into a, as somebody carries them up the steps. The teachers shouldn't have to uh, break their backs doing it, and uh, uh, parents shouldn't have to break their backs doing it. And you know, it is, it, there's too much stress. I I once fantasized about uh, a video tape of uh, someone like Jeremy, my son, uh, just kind of a sequence of all the times during the day that he has to be picked up and dropped, picked up and let down to get in and out of the house, to get in and out of the car, to get in and out of the school, to get in and out of the movie theaters and uh, the malls. It, it's absurd for us to treat people that way and uh, we've got to stop doing it. It's, it's hurting us as, uh, as a nation uh, morally and economically and socially and we've got to stop it. The message is very clear. You're not that important. You use a wheelchair. We have steps for people that are important. Uh, we didn't think about you. Uh, it's kind of like the, the Southwest Plaza Mall here in Denver, uh, in Jefferson County. Uh, Santa Claus comes there every year, and uh, they put him in the center entertainment pit of the mall, which is six steps down, and there's no elevator, there's no ramp. The mall is the newest mall in the metro area. And uh, when Jeremy first went into that mall during Christmas to see Santa Claus, you can't imagine the disappointment that he experienced when uh, we told him that we weren't going to carry him down those steps. We'd go see a Santa Claus at another mall. Uh, it's a, it really violates his dignity to have to be carried down to see someone dressed up in a Santa Claus outfit. And uh, we, by the way, have raised that issue with that mall. They have yet to do anything about it. Just as we've raised the issue with the, the South Glen Mall in terms of their movie theater, which is, is not ramped, and uh, restaurants throughout the metro area that are not uh, ramp. And I'm not talking about restaurants built 50 years ago. I'm talking about restaurants and mall and movie houses and malls that have been built in the last 10 years. And uh, someone is violating uh, the building codes, uh, not to mention the moral rights of these uh, people with disabilities. So transportation, obviously accessibility is the real issue, and that means uh, transportation in terms of buses, vans, and the ability to get in and out of public facilities. Uh, and uh, when we face up to our responsibilities, we're going to have more productive citizens, we're going to have more income. Most of these changes don't cost that much. You know, it, it really makes me angry to think that the Denver Metro bus system has had air conditioning for years. Air conditioners are very expensive pieces of equipment. I don't have an air conditioner in my home. I've lived in the Denver area for 25 years and I've never had an air conditioner. Uh, but for some reason, we feel that we have to have air conditioners to keep the average citizen uh, comfortable on the RTD buses. But we have yet to make RTD fully accessible in terms of lifts. Uh, the lifts are not much more expensive. In fact, they may be less expensive than the typical air conditioner. Uh, a few years ago when I checked the prices, they were about $1,200 per bus for a lift. And I know that a whole house air conditioner costs a lot more than that, so I suspect that bus air condition conditioners are at least as much. Now, I know that we have one of the most accessible systems in the country in Denver in terms of mass transit, and I am glad for that, uh, but we still have a long ways to go. And uh, it's a good thing we've, you know, we've got some politicians now that are beginning to say uh, we support full accessibility. And uh, I think that's what we ought to do. We ought to demand uh, that the people that have that forward-looking vision uh, be elected, as opposed to people that have a very negative, uh, antiquated, dinosaur uh, mentality. Transformation. Once we believe and get a strong public opinion that, yes, that's something we want, we figure out ways to make it happen. I mean, we spend money on sending people to the moon and working on sending them to other planets. And, uh, um, we can create whatever we want to create, Certainly no one would argue that there's not a, a whole lot of things that are of less important to do than to provide transportation. Civil rights issues are above money issues. I mean, they're the first priority of where we divert resources is to make sure that uh, people have civil rights. So the cost argument, the too much trouble to operate and, and again, you know, we can, we can use this space, I mean, you can send rocket ships to the moon you can put the creative engineering and technological energy together to design a bus system that has a lift that works 100, virtually 100% of the time and is easy to operate by a driver. But similar kinds of arguments were, were given
to justify continuing slavery or to continue denying rights to women or um, any other disenfranchised, disenfranchised group in history has heard the same, the same kind of argument too hard and it costs too much and they're just empty. And we have to do it. We have to figure out a way to do it. We at least have to make a commitment to try. I don't want to wake up the people who aren't getting involved I and mean, have an opinion about these things. Um, I mean, we need to blast people with disabilities who aren't expressing their anger. I mean, if you feel angry about the lack of transportation, you know, get out there and, and share it to call them. You know, call them these radio talk shows and start letting them know. Write letters to the editor. Persons with disabilities have a lot to be angry about. Um, you know, the poverty that, that many of them live in is, is, is anger producing, and I think it needs people need to know it's there. Some, and, and at some point, people have to band together and, and, and focus all that anger, not individually, collectively. And that's another, you know, individual anger needs to join with other individual angers in order to be effective. And, and organize things like ADAPT. I mean, ADAPT was formed out of anger. Anger at APTA refusing to promote a national policy of action.